Wingnut Origins TMNT. Wingnut was originally created in the year 1989 by Ryan Brown for the TMNT serial comics, and his character is heavily inspired by and based on DC's Batman, which truly has become his unique selling point. Wingnut is an alien with wings, a bat of sorts, and although he has been called a Dracula before, he is far from it. Sometimes a hero, sometimes a villain, his appearance in the comics and series truly are multidimensional. Even though Wingnut is often compared to Batman for obvious reasons, which will be discussed in this video, it is important to know that despite that, he is an interesting character in his own right. And although Wingnut has not been around the Ninja Turtles universe as much as other prolific villains like Shredder, the Bat-themed TNMT villain has a lot of potentials. In this video, we will explore everything there is to know about Wingnut, including the different art pieces featuring Wingnut and his sidekick, Screwloose. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you! Let's begin! Hey, if it's alright, I'll just hang out for a while. The first time on television, TMNT 1987. Written by Francis Moss and Ted Peterson, the 18th episode of the show's fifth season titled Zack and Alien Invaders focuses on introducing the characters Wingnut and Screwloose. The episode begins with the Ninja Turtles unwinding, watching television, and reading the Alien Invader comics. As they mention their buddy and honorary Ninja Turtle Zack, we see him walking through the streets when he spots something suspicious, most likely the bug-eyed aliens. He wastes no time and immediately alerts the police department. Panic is caused all over as April, Irma, the police force, and Zack gather at the place these bug-eyed aliens were last spotted. However, much to everyone's disappointment, the could-be aliens were pest exterminators. The Ninja Turtles and Splinter realize that maybe Zack's imagination has gotten the best of him after reading too many issues of the comic Alien Invaders, and it would be best to have a conversation with him. After another incident at the mall, Zack became like the boy who cried wolf, and no one would believe him until he managed to prove to the Ninja Turtles. However, it is not before long that they finally figure out that Zack might just be telling the truth. This time, the evildoers are slime monsters, and the Ninja Turtles arrive just on time to help Zack and possibly the entire city. As the Turtles hose these slime monsters with water, they realize that they weren't wild monsters, but something far more sinister. This incident feels like the final blow as Zack bursts into tears, giving away his rights as an honorary Ninja Turtle, at least until he gets his imagination under control. Maybe by reading a little less of the comic and focusing more on his work. However, things take a rather sad turn when Zack's parents, disappointed by his behavior in the past few days, enroll him into a military school. As Zack is enrolled in the school, he soon realizes that something is wrong with the kids there. It turns out that all of them behave like zombies, as if they are programmed to behave a certain way and say the right things all the time. The only normal kid, apart from Zack, was one who enrolled the day before him, Eric. Zack's adventure for a midnight snack leads the viewers to learn about Wingnut for the very first time. As he spies on, he sees the Colonel and Sergeant holding Eric down on a chair, and soon enough decide to take their suits off, revealing their true form. What Zack sees bewilders him. The Colonel and the Sergeant turn out to be life-sized Bat and Mosquito, or as they introduce themselves, Wingnut and Screwloose. From the planet Flaganon, their intentions are clear and they wish to conquer the Earth by beginning to train young recruits to help them. Now only one person remains who hasn't been brainwashed, Zack, and he takes it upon himself to save everyone from these aliens. Screwloose and Wingnut are both well equipped apart from a small army of brainwashed kids. They also have an array of weapons in their arsenal to help them conquer Earth. When Zack realizes just how powerful they are, he first calls the police for help, and when they don't believe him, he calls the Ninja Turtles, who are conflicted about helping him but does it anyway. It isn't long before Zack is taken away as the two aliens hold him hostage. Meanwhile, back in the city, one of their alien weapons is let loose, which causes havoc. And of course, without wasting any time, April and Irma are on the scene, ready to report on it. April finds Zack's mask stuck to the alien robot, immediately alerting the Ninja Turtles as their suspicions are finally confirmed. And so begins the showdown between the Ninja Turtles and the alien invaders Wingnut and Screwloose. 
As we know from the previous five seasons, the Turtles will do anything it takes to defeat the evildoers and save innocent people. Zack manages to destroy the mind-controlling machine, releasing the kids of its effect on them. Screwloose and Wingnut are more about giving instructions to their robot weapons than actually doing something on their own. Before they can get caught, the aliens manage to escape in their spaceship. Zack is once again bestowed with the title of an honorary Ninja Turtle. Although we don't learn a lot about Wingnut in this episode, his introduction is more than enough to seriously alarm the Ninja Turtles. The 2003 Remake, TMNT 2003 the 2003 remake of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had the usual protagonists which included the Ninja Turtles, Master Splinter, April, and Casey Jones. On the other hand, the antagonists included the Shredder, Karai, Bishop, Rat King, and others. However, this remake had no room for Wingnut or his friend and sidekick Screwloose. Although this remake didn't include Wingnut, the plot of this series is closer to the comics in terms of tone, as compared to the 1987 series. Some story arcs in this series have been adapted from the comics, and the main villain in the series is the Shredder and the Foot Clan. Speaking of Shredder, do check out our exclusive video of his dark and tragic origin. Moving on. It really is a shame that Wingnut didn't make it to the series, because this interaction with the Shredder would have been an interesting one, no matter if he was on Shredder's side or against him. Because this piece of work was more adult-oriented while still being for a young audience, there could have been several interesting themes around Wingnut and his origin. However, they do make up for the lack of him in the 2012 remake. This series had its fair share of villains, but one can't help but wonder how different things would have been even with a little cameo from Wingnut. Obviously, another one of Tortoise Man's cunning tricks. 2012 Remake, TMNT 2012. The episode featuring the subject of this video begins with the Ninja Turtles and their beloved comic books, one which even hints at the Marvel comics Fantastic Four. I mean, they were reading some titled Fantastic Four food groups, but more importantly, they are also reading a vintage comic titled The Adventures of Wingnut and Screwloose. This is when April comes in, admitting that she hasn't been feeling too well because of headaches, along with weird nightmares about space and other galaxies. Yeah, she had been traveling across planets. Although it could be her adjusting to life back on Earth, the blame is put on the crystal she never takes off. It dawns upon April that she might be addicted to the crystal, but to prove herself and the turtles wrong, she decides to take it off, handing it over to them. They decide to experiment on the crystal, soon realizing that it is a lot more than just a crystal. It is an embodiment of trouble. It transforms into a cloudy substance that can move and is most likely alive. Once again, we see Michelangelo reading the Wingnut and Screwloose comic, and the second he leaves the room, a cloudy substance makes its way in. Chaos takes over the city. When Monoculus, the villain from the Wingnut comics, comes to life and takes over the city, causing widespread destruction, the Ninja Turtles are ready to save the day, but realize that it won't be easy, considering this creature is way stronger than they could have ever anticipated. April uses the crystal, and she manages to destroy Monoculus. There is no way Mikey can fall asleep knowing that his comic book came to life, and he steals April's crystal. It isn't long before he brings Wingnut and Screwloose to life, with Casey's help, and they seem more excited to be back on Earth. Instead of being thrilled to meet their fan, Wingnut and Screwloose are convinced they've come to face with Tortoise Man and begin attacking him. Wingnut tried to unmask him, and that's when he and Screwloose realize that Michelangelo and Casey weren't bad guys. Soon, the four of them begin patrolling the city for crime and helping the citizens. Meanwhile, back at the lair, April has turned the place upside down in her attempts to find her crystal. This is when Master Splinter intervenes and recommends she does use it, which only angers her further. Back at patrolling, Mikey, Casey, Wingnut, and Screwloose encounter another comic book nemesis, Skullface a criminal mastermind. Mikey's dreams come true as he and Wingnut throw their final punch at Skullface together. There's a slight disagreement, however, as Mikey tries to explain that Wingnut and Screwloose are simply comic book characters as he narrates their life and incidents, which doesn't sit right with the duo, who know that they aren't just some characters in a book. This is when Mikey reveals the crystal and Wingnut is taken aback, saying this is the source, the source of life and power itself. They take the crystal as it unleashes something in them that was dormant until now, and only makes them stronger. On the other hand, April is still struggling, desperate to find her crystal, as the turtles finally get in touch with Mikey, who desperately needs help. 
This episode also shows us the Bell Tower Lair, which is where Wingnut and Screwloose hide, just like they do in Mikey's comics. It's fully equipped with technology, weapons, and costumes. By now, Wingnut is convinced that the crystal can help them survive in this world once they truly tap into its potential. The stage was set for a climactic battle as the rest of the Ninja Turtles show up, but Wingnut and Screwloose do not hold back. The Turtles try to convince Wingnut that he is a hero in the comics, as April tries to retrieve her crystal. Once she successfully manages to do so, Wingnut and Screwloose decide that this is their fate, and they were sent back to the comic book. We see Wingnut have a eureka moment where he understands that they were never meant to be in the real world. I mean, to begin with. They belong to no world whatsoever. After a tearful goodbye from Mikey, his heroes return to his beloved comic. Maybe Wingnut and his sidekick Screwloose truly were the heroes in this episode, or maybe they weren't. It is really left up to the audience to decide. IDW Comic Appearance In the comic, Bebop and Rocksteady destroy everything. We can already gather from the title that this comic issue would be chaotic, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will put up a fight to oppose these sinister mutants. The comic begins in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where the Ninja Turtles are confused as they ask René, the assistant Time Master, about their whereabouts. Were they in the crazy verse? because that's where the turtles assumed they were as they looked around their surroundings. Rene explains that they're actually in the TT Alter Stream, an alternate time stream formed by a time traveler. However, something like this is scarce in its occurrence. As they begin unraveling the situation in front of them, the comic book readers are offered to skip this part as things get complex, or they can continue to read as per their wish. I personally think this was a rather novel idea to include a way a comic book is actually written. Nonetheless, a new timeline was created after Bebop and Rocksteady time traveled, and the Ninja Turtles have now been rerouted to that timeline. And if this confuses you, the ninjas warned you to skip it. The one who isn't present here is Savanti, and although he is in the same place at the same time, the dimensions are different. You can think of it as a parallel universe of sorts. Now, they must travel to a certain point in space and time to retrieve the scepter from Bebop and Rocksteady, which was the only article that could help everyone. According to Rene, that place they have to be is Stockton, and the year must be 2012, and that's where the turtles came from. That's where and when it all began. They are transported to the year 2012 in Stockton, right outside the Stockton labs that police and security have surrounded as people run out of the lab. Inside the lab, there are Rocksteady and Bebop searching the entire lab for a mutagen. Soon enough, they begin to turn on each other when things begin to go a little to the south. As they fight, we see Lindsay and April trying their best to stay safe, as April holds on to four small turtles in a small aquarium. As it is time for them to finally escape from the lab, Rene, along with the Ninja Turtles, enter the lab through a portal. April stands there in shock and horror as the Turtles tell her that they are, in fact, Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, and Donatello, her own Turtles, but from the future. Before they can explain any further, Bebop and Rocksteady emerge, ready to fight the Turtles, but the henchmen were still riled up from fighting each other. Thus begins the battle between them as Rene tries her best to buy the Turtles some time so they can take the bad guys down, who are still after the mutagen. The Turtles try their best to distract Bebop and Rocksteady in order to try to retrieve the Scepter, but it proves to be a lot more difficult than they initially anticipated. They realize that their best strategy is to divide and conquer at this point, so they can stop Bebop and Rocksteady from mutating their human selves while also getting the Scepter back. Before they can think twice, a winged creature comes flying in. It is a bat with metal wings. Yes, that would be Wingnut, or as he's nicknamed in the comics as Dracula. He and Screwloose were both held in captivity at Stockton, and now have broken out, but it isn't long before they are taken down with ease, as the Turtles are looking to escape this timeline, but it isn't long before more people come in, trying to protect the mutagen, and the Turtles assume that the new guests to this party are the bad guys too. Chaos ensues. Everyone is fighting one another, as Rene reminds the Turtles that this is pointless and they must return. Before we know it, the worst case scenario comes to life as the creatures get shoved through the portal by Rocksteady and Bebop. Finally, Rene manages to help the turtles escape, and when asked where they were headed, she simply mentions the 79th dimension, thus leaving an open-ended cliffhanger. I forgot. Interesting fact you should know about Wingnut. 
The most interesting part about Wingnut's character is the fact that this has several references and links to DC's Batman, although Wingnut isn't nearly as popular or likable amongst the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans. In fact, the 2004 series, The Batman, and the 2012 series with Wingnut's debut have the same title, the Bat in the Belfry. He also uses a bat-shaped boomerang called the Wingnutarang, which pays homage to Batman's iconic Batarang. Another direct comparison between the two is the similarities between Wingnut's bell tower lair and the Batcave. And the cherry on top, the voice actor for Wingnut, Darren Norris, also voiced Batman in the animated short Joker's Playhouse. So if you like Batman, there's a good chance that you might like Wingnut too. Although despite the similarities, Wingnut lasts the charms and looks of Batman. This character also made his debut in the Archie comics and the Playmates toy line. Although his appearance in the comics and series is limited, he has created a lasting impact as the Batman of the TMNT universe. Where else has he appeared? Wingnut made his video game debut in TMNT Tournament Fighters in the year 1993, which surprisingly had Screwloose missing and Wingnut joining the tournament for fun. He eventually became a part of the Playmates toy line, much like the characters that were a part of the Archie comics and this entire franchise. In 2012, Wingnut was introduced in the video game Mutants of Manhattan, where he fought next to Krang and again without Screwloose. Although their future in the franchise isn't certain, it is a possibility that they will eventually be brought back, especially after his popularity in the 2012 animated series. For all we know, Wingnut could give Batman a run for his money, or at least have his autograph signed, considering this whole character has been derived from and inspired from Batman. Although Wingnut is often seen with his sidekick Screwloose, there is a definite fan favorite between the two. And it has to be Wingnut, which could mean we see more of him in the future, and if not in the TMNT franchise, maybe there's room for him in DC, and Batman can learn a thing or two from him. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone! Holy goodbyes, everyone!